Hey all, I'm Captain Smash, and welcome back to my Beginner's PVM series. Next up are the Twin Furies, Zamorak's distractingly sexy generals in God Wars 2. This guide covers how to solo the Twin Furies in what I consider to be the easiest way for beginners, which is with melee. If you're looking to get your first few kills, or you get intimidated by terms like ability stalling and ring switches, then this guide is for you. As usual, I'll be covering recommended requirements, gear setups, inventory, ability bars, boss mechanics, and a full kill run through. I'll also have some bonus tips and tricks at the end of the video you can integrate into your kills to make them even better once you've got the basics down. Additionally, I'll have timestamps to every section in the description. First up, requirements. You need 80 range to fight this boss, or you can't even get into the arena, although it is boostable. Whilst that's the only technical requirement, we're going to be using melee, so you're also going to want 80 plus combat stats across the board in attack, strength, and defense. You'll also want at least level 70 prayer with the pious prayers unlocked. Turmoil and Soul Split are especially good at this boss though, so if you have them unlocked, use those. I don't have level 95 prayer though, so I'll be using the regular prayer book in this video. The herbal level for extremes or overloads is recommended, although it's not required. Overloads are extremely good and one of the single biggest upgrades you can make to your PVM toolkit, so I'd strongly recommend getting them if you don't have them, but if you don't have them, you can still do this boss. The kills will just be a little bit slower. Access to Water Treat and the Water Treat Teleport spell are purely a convenience, but they give you very quick access to banking and returning, so they will massively increase your effective kills per hour by minimizing banking time. You can unlock the Water Treat Teleport spell by getting 10 kills at any boss, and you can attune a portal directly to the Twin Furies after getting your first kill for just 100k. It's a fantastic return on investment. Next up, let's talk about gear. Firstly, my assumption is that if you're watching this guide, you probably don't have best in slot gear or stats. But if you do, then I'll leave a link to the wiki in the description for this video that will give you an up-to-date list of best in slot gear. You're going to want to use a two-handed melee setup here to abuse the fact that you can damage both twin furies at the same time, and two-handed weapons have great AoE abilities. A halberd here is especially good as it gives you more opportunities to hit both furies at the same time and this will significantly speed up your kills. The Twin Furies have quite a high defense, so I'd recommend tier 80 weapons or better. This actually only leaves the following 5 halberds to choose from. Masuda's War Spear is the cheapest, although the Attuned Crystal Halberd is probably the easiest for Iron Man to get, as you can get a free Attuned Crystal Weapon Seed from Lady Ithil once you hit 90 smithing. In my example clips, I'm using a Dragon Rider Lance. I'd say that the Twin Furies are a relatively gear dependent boss compared to say Hellweir or Vindicta, so I think it's probably worth investing in a good halberd weapon if you want to get efficient kills and you plan to stay here for a long time. For armor, you want your best power armor. God Wars 1 is a great and affordable starting point. Avoid tank armor even if it's a higher tier, because the DPS boost you get from power armor outweighs the damage reduction you get from tank armor. Additionally, you'll want your best damage boosting item in every other slot. I'm taking a Dragon Rider Amulet as it's a free quest reward, a Melee Kiln Cape because it's great and easy to obtain in 2021 from the Fight Kill minigame, as well as a Sign of Life and a Ring of Life because I'm a hardcore and I don't want to lose my status to a DC. For your aura, you'll probably want to use the Berserker aura if you have it as it's a good upgrade on every other aura, but if you don't, then you can bring the Dark Magic or Vampirism auras instead, which are significantly easier to obtain from Wars Retreat. As a beginner, your inventory can be relatively simple. You want your stat boosting potion. I'm bringing overloads because I have them. If you don't have overloads, bring the best stat boosting potion you can make or buy. I also bring a prayer potion in case I run out of prayer, although for a single kill, I actually don't need to use it. I'm also bringing a Talon Beast because it's my best summoning familiar for DPS. The rest of your inventory can mostly be filled up with food whilst you learn the mechanics. I'm bringing sharks because they're easy to obtain and they heal quite a lot. Sustaining at Twin Furies is difficult without high level options like Soul Split or Scrimshaws and Vampirism, so if you don't have those, bringing high healing food is actually very helpful because it means you'll have to eat less so you won't lose as much adrenaline to eating. The Twin Furies are technically susceptible to poison, but due to a bug around their shared health pool, the poison actually does nothing, so leave your cinder banes and poison potions at home. There is an option to bring a shield here for shield switching. I don't find shield switching helpful for this boss, but some people do. 
I'll cover when you might use a shield later on in the mechanics section. You can fight the twin theories with either revolution or full manual. I've included a sample revolution bar from the wiki and we'll add a link to the full page in the description if you want to check out other rotations. If you're using revolution, you might want to pull the following threshold abilities off your rebel bar and activate them manually. Hurricane and Quake. Using these abilities at the correct time can significantly increase your DPS during the fight. I don't use the Berserk ultimate during this fight because I don't have the items that recover adrenaline to make it worthwhile. If you have something like an adrenaline pot, then Berserk is also good to have in your action bar during this fight. Additionally, you may find the following abilities useful to have to hand as well. Flash or Escape for moving quickly around the arena, Resonance if you decide to do Shield Switch, and Devotion if you're using Protection Prayers and taking too much damage. Hopefully this guide has been useful so far. If you do find it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe as well as let me know what bosses you'd like to see done in the future. Next up, let's talk mechanics. First off, the Twin Furies are two bosses in one. You have Numora, who will henceforth be called Red Fury, and Avarice, who I will call Blue Fury. This is because it's simpler and I also have no respect for followers of Zamorak. Each Fury has 250,000 HP, but they also have a shared health pool of just 200,000 HP. I know, I don't think it makes any sense either. As a player, you only care about the shared health pool, straight at the top of the screen. Once it hits zero, the two Furies die regardless of their individual HP bars. Like all Gold Wars 2 generals, the Twin Furies follow a set rotation, which is Wall Charge, Ceiling Collapse, Channeling Bomb, and then finally Bomb Exploding. Then they repeat. As usual, let's look at each mechanic in more detail. Right at the start of the fight, Blue Fury hops to the side of the arena and then charges across it. If you get hit by the charge, you get knocked to the side and take up to 2000 melee damage. To avoid this, you just have to sidestep. In the meantime, Red Fury hits you with fast ranged attacks doing up to 800 damage. It stacks up quickly, so either protect from range or use Soul Split if you have it. Blue Fury always charges 4 times during this phase, and she follows a set pattern of North to South, West to East, South to North, and finally East to West. For that reason, I find it helps to move with her like in this clip. By rotating clockwise around Red Fury, you minimize the distance you generally have to move and you can focus more on DPSing, and you barely even have to look at Blue Fury as she charges about. One tip here is to make sure you attack Red Fury as soon as you enter the arena. This means that you won't accidentally run after the blue one like in this clip when she starts her wall charges. After she finishes her wall charges, Blue Fury joins Red Fury except she attacks with melee. This is a great chance to use your AoE abilities like Hurricane and Quake for the first time to effectively get double damage. Next up, Red Fury will shout, We will purge them all, and she jumps to a random location in the arena like in this clip. After a few seconds she will become untargetable, and start causing AoE range damage every few ticks across the entire map, except in a small 4x4 space around which she's standing. As long as you are already targeting her, your character should automatically follow her across the map to the safe spot underneath her, making this a fairly easy mechanic. Whilst this is going on, Blue Fury will continue to attack you with melee like normal, so if you're using protection prayers, make sure you switch to melee. Whilst you wait for the ceiling collapse to stop, make sure you keep DPS in the Blue Fury, but save up any big AoE abilities because you can't damage the other Fury at this time. After a short period, Red Fury lands and starts attacking you with ranged. Now is a good time to use AoE abilities again, but you have to be quick because you want to make sure they're not on cooldown for the next mechanic. The third mechanic is the channeled bomb, and I'm splitting it into two parts. The channeling and the bomb. First, both Furies jump to the center of the arena and start channeling a beam into each other like anime characters. At the same time, a ring of fire appears at the edges of the arena that does 2,500 fire damage every 3 ticks. Don't stand in the fire. So instead, run up and start hitting the Furies. Even outside the fire, you take constant unavoidable damage every tick that can hit up to 350. Also, whilst they're channeling, both Furies take double damage, so this is the time to really go to town with your thresholds. Prioritize AoE attacks, because if you hit both Furies, you're basically doing 4 times damage here. You might notice that there's an orange bar that slowly drains as the Furies channel their energy. When it hits empty, a bomb goes off, dealing 4,500 damage. You can dodge this by using a movement ability like Surge to move out of the way, as it only hits the center of the arena. Helpfully, the Ring of Fire disappears a little before the bomb goes off, so if you time it right, you take no damage like in this clip. This being RuneScape, sometimes it might look like you time it right, but you really don't. Rip that Ring of Life. 
Alternatively, you can switch to your shield and use resonance like this. I actually find this less forgiving as you can easily resonance one of the small 350 damage hits instead of the bomb like in this clip. Also, whilst resonance reduces the damage from the bomb to zero, it doesn't heal you here. This is probably down to personal preference. I find using Surge easier here, but your mileage may vary. This is the final mechanic, so after this the Furies just run through the same rotation until you kill them. As always, now that we cover the mechanics, I'll do a full kill run through with some narration, and after that I also have a small section at the end to cover some bonus tips and tricks you can integrate into your play. As usual, I start the fight by just filling up my adrenaline and then teleporting to the boss arena. I'm going to do a little bit of adrenaline stalling just to make sure I start the fight with as much adrenaline as possible, and then I enter the arena and make sure my prayers are up, my potions are up, and then I'm going to attack Red Fury here to make sure I don't accidentally follow Blue Fury around once she teleports like that. And now I just follow clockwise around Red Fury to make sure that I never get hit by Blue Fury. Uh, as long as I go clockwise, I don't even need to look at where Blue Fury is because I know I'll always dodge her as long as I keep moving in a little square around Red Fury. Now I'm going to use my AoE Adrenaline abilities that I had stored up to get a bit of extra damage in. You take a lot of damage here because you can't pray against both styles and the, their auto attacks are actually very damaging. But you can see as the next mechanic started, I automatically followed Red Fury to where she teleported to because I was focusing on her. And then I do a little bit of adjustment here just to get a, a nice bleed off with Slaughter, but otherwise basically it's in the mechanic handles itself. Again, they'll now both attack you. You'll take quite a lot of damage here because they do quite a lot of damage with the auto attacks. It's just the way the fight goes and you can't pray against both. Now soon they'll teleport to the middle of the arena. I take a bit of damage from the firewall before I can get out of it, but otherwise I just run in between them so I can hit both of my AoE attacks. I do my AoE attacks as soon as Roth cooldown and as soon as I have adrenaline to do so. And you can do so much damage here. Look at these 6,000s. You can see there's like um, there's 5,000s, 4,000s all over the place. And then flash out. There's a very generous timing on the flash. You have about almost a whole second in which to do it in. And now the fight's almost over. There's going to be a little bit more... Blue Fury will probably just have time to start her mechanic of wall charging, right? But then before she even gets to do a couple of those, I'll finish the fight off. So you can see I can't quite do it in a single rotation, but it's still a very quick kill compared to the other God Wars 2 bosses, but it is quite gear dependent. Lastly, I have one or two extra comments that didn't neatly fit into the previous sections or make assumptions that I wasn't sure were valid for a beginner's guide, so I've left them here until the end. Firstly, unlike bosses like Hellweir or Vindicta, there's no big resonance payoff here to heal you up during the fight, so if you want to stay for multiple kills or do no food runs, you need to bring alternate sources of healing. Additionally, because you often take both range and melee damage at the same time, protection prayers are less useful than normal. Soul Split is excellent here for this reason, as are Ramprism Scrimshaws, Blood Amulets of Fury, basically anything that gives you sustain. If you don't have these, it's fine, but it will lead to eating more food and getting slower kill times. Second, despite being demons, neither Fury takes extra damage from anti-demon weapons like Dark Light or the Demon Slayer perk. Third, if you're feeling sweaty, you can bring both Jewel Wield and a two-handed weapon switch. You'd use the Jewel Wield against a single Fury and a two-hander when you're able to hit both. I certainly don't do this, but I've seen a better PVM than I do it, so I guess it works. And last, if you have things like adrenaline pots or other ways to maintain or quickly build adrenaline, you can use the Berserk ultimate ability before the channeling phase and then build up enough adrenaline to use your DPS thresholds. This can give you some incredible DPS and potentially kill them before they even finish channeling the bomb. Overall, Twin Furies are a mechanically simple boss, but due to their high auto attack DPS and some unavoidable damage abilities, they are more reliant on having good gear than some of the other bosses in God Wars 2. For a small channel like this one, liking, subscribing, or leaving comments in the chat are super important for me to get feedback as well as get my videos out to a wider audience, so if you did find the video helpful, please help me out and do any of what I just mentioned. Happy bossing.